So I invited you both to come and talk about this issue of free speech, mm -hmm. um, which is one of the core tenets of CCTV, open access. And one of our missions is free right. speech, open access, but it's also about building community. And so there's a tension sometimes. When Shouldn't be. I don't think there's a tension, people. but that's the point, yeah. Um, Sandy, mm -hmm. um, you have... Um, I won your award for free speech. I know, you have strong uh, views that I want um, to hear from. And Marina also did a public records request around um, the show that um, was done with Christopher Aaron Felker around stickering and um, some of the comments that were made in the show um, seeming to some folks to be harmful, hateful, or hurtful to transgender folks in the community. and it sort of began a, an internal conversation about um, how our organization balances free speech um, with serving the needs of community building. And so I just wanted to bring you two here together to talk about this mm -hmm. and, um, you know, maybe share some insight and maybe one thing is just to start with why free speech is important, because I know it is to both of you, and, and what that means, where that comes from. And maybe just actually, if you just introduce yourselves. Well, I'm, I'm Marina Brown. I've been involved in promoting speech, free speech internationally. I've been thanked by people for, in Saudi Arabia for running tour relays that allowed them to speak to the rest of the world without the uh, restrictive firewall that Saudi Arabia puts in. I won't give details, but I have been involved in a free speech lawsuit where I was promoting, uh, promoting for a uh, lesbian professor who was fired for her beliefs. Uh, the settlement of the um, agreement forbids me from talking more, which I at this point in my life, deeply regret not taking that to court. I should have done that, but my mother worked at the college. <laughs> um, I do a lot of stuff dealing with fascism, and when you deal with fascism, you deal with uh, the issue of free speech. Um, in in the United States right now, there's two cases that particularly concern me. One of them is the Stop Cop City uh, movement, where people are being criminalized for their beliefs. The prosecutor, uh, the DeKalb County prosecutor, is using the beliefs and even people signing a cab on things as saying that they are part of a wider conspiracy. Dan Baker is an anti-fascist who went to Rojava to um, fight ISIS. And when he came back, he uh, saw what was gonna happen on J6, as many of us did. And he told people, come to the Florida State House to protect this against assault. He is now sitting in prison because they construed his earlier statements to be terrorist. One of the things you know, I worry about I get upset when right-wingers whine about their free speech. You know, they're, they're coming to take my rights away, my speech away, say that I can't uh, talk about CRT in schools, and uh, I think that's kind of ironic. Great, thanks. So that, Marina, thanks for introducing yourself, and mm -hmm. you touched on a couple of things to talk about. Sandy, do you want to just introduce yourself, and maybe where you, where you come from with your belief in free speech? Okay, I'm uh, Sandy Bear, and I'm an attorney. And I guess on this issue, I would call myself a free speech absolutist. Um, first of all, we are probably the only constitution in the world which guarantees free speech. I don't know any other constitution that has such a strong statement in it about the rights of people to pretty much say and think whatever they want to say or think. Um, and I value our Constitution deeply, as everyone probably in this community knows. Beyond that, I mean, I believe in our Constitution. The United States Constitution was put into place against the tyranny of the British government. That's what our Constitution protects. It protects speech, even if it's against the government, even if it's against, even if it's what you call hate speech. 
because to me, uh, there is no such thing as hate speech. If it's speech, it's allowed under the United States Constitution. And in a sense, speech also protects against violence. I believe that because when you talk to each other, that's a way that you're not going to beat each other to a pulp. Mm -hmm. So I believe that uh, in two levels. One, it is a guarantee of our Constitution, absolute free speech. Secondly, it is a guarantee that peaceful conversations can happen even when, when people violently disagree. If you're talking, you're not killing each other. So those are the two reasons that I would really call myself a free speech absolutist. So, and I mean, Maureen, I, I, want to, mm -hmm. I want you to respond, but I think there's, I think I'm curious a little bit about the speech against the government and then speech mm -hmm. against individuals or marginalized people or protected groups. I, well, as I said, I think speech is absolutely allowed. What isn't allowed under our Constitution or in our law is threats against people, physical threats. That is not allowed, and I agree with that. Uh, Brandenburg versus Ohio, uh, 1969, says your speech is allowed unless mm -hmm. it crea is, creates an imminent threat of right. lawless exactly. action. Exactly. However, in, um, in the International Criminal Tribunal on Rwanda, they, even though that was an international tribunal, they considered the Brandenburg decision. There were radio broadcasters in Rwanda that kept on talking about, you know, we're going to kill the minorities, we're going to kill them. And this speech got louder and louder and louder until it provoked the, the genocide in Rwanda. Likewise, many American jurists were present at Nuremberg, where Julius Stryker was prosecuted and um, ultimately hung for his promotion of genocide against the Jews. He, Stryker did not do one bit of the Holocaust. He, he tortured some prisoners when he was a commissar there, but he didn't participate in that. It was his speech. Mm -hmm. That's that dangerous went, that, then. That went yeah. beyond that. Yeah, right, and we have right. to we have to recognize mm -hmm. a difference between opinion and you know, everyone's got you know to put it crudely, everyone's got a hole in their rear. Just like everyone's got an opinion. What I worry about is when people organize to harm minorities. And many of the groups like that I I fight against, like the Vanguard America, which became the Patriot Front, they organized to hurt people. Jews will not replace us is what they chanted in Charlottesville. And the, these, the, it was Vanguard America that, that brought James Fields there. And as a researcher on the far right, many times I watch people's speech escalate and create these massacres, like the guy who shot up the, the uh, synagogue in Pittsburgh. I was doing, I had a computer program. But that you're was talking about two different things. That guy who organizes shootings, of course, is a criminal. Mm -hmm. We're, so I guess, the, I guess for us, and this is something <coughs> that I, that where, where comes the line, Sandy or Marina? How do you think about um, holding other community members and, and what happens when there is hurtful or harmful or hate speech? Whether you can define that or whether you can recognize it or whether you feel it, because people feel it. I think the it. law is not governed, maybe unfortunately for you, Megan, and maybe unfortunately for a lot of people. The law is not governed by feelings. The law is governed by our Constitution. Under our Constitution, there is freedom to be hateful. But it, it, it then becomes, I think what I'm hearing Marina say is it yeah. becomes more than feelings, it becomes actions, it becomes if, laws. When it becomes, it becomes action, of course, it's criminal. Yeah, you're, you're the organization that I am annoyed at you for supporting, the oh. LGB Alliance, is organizing harm against trans people. This is not just opinion. It's organizing to hurt my community. And I, I, I'm, I am partially here to say that. And Good I, for you. Thank you for your opinion. Yeah, and, uh, and I am organizing opinion. against your group. I guess so. So, so this is an opportunity to 
I mean, if, if one way to counter hurtful or harmful speech or bad speech or speech you don't like is to I think it's produce the more law. speech. Yeah, I know. I think it's, I would say have more speech. So, but, but where does that go? What happens? I mean, how do we, how do we engage? What happens is how do we what's engage called, with one another? What's called Megan is conversation. Yeah. So we're having a, so yes. So how do we have that conversation we're having now? It. Yeah. The conversations often spill over into violence. I've been at many places where it did. I was at Charlottesville. I was attacked by Nazis. There, there, yes, there were peaceful conversations even between the far right, and one of my conversations caused a lot of uh, consequences because it was publicized. But there was also attempted murder and I got attacked But there. you heard what I said, attempted murder is a crime. Yes, it is, Clearly. but we have to recognize where people are organizing to do a pogrom. You can, and, and when you see that, you can't say it's just, it's just speech. When if you it's organized, I said clearly, and I'll say it again, if people are organized to harm people, it's a crime. Go to the police about it. Well, the police don't usually do anything about it. Like, like, if, I'm sorry if, about like that. When I, when I'm, I'm sorry about that. I don't, I, I don't deal. With, I don't care about mm -hmm. what the police do. I am, oh. a, I am a commu I'm an oh, anti-fascist okay. organizer, really? okay. and I put my body. I do between, care. I put my body between the community yeah. and these people, and I've been harmed by that. I have too done both. So, I, right now, if we can just bring it back to this community organization. So we're right, looking at this community organization, organization yeah. CCTV. So if we're just what? looking at, we're looking at CCTV, yeah. right? And so mm -hmm. one of the principles, one of the ideas is if, and maybe both of you can speak to this, is when a society like ours that has a constitution functions best when the when the organizations that exist in it are able to um, achieve or strive for meeting those same constitutional standards. So there's actually nothing that prevents CCTV from shutting its doors, from saying, you know, we'll have these shows and we won't have these shows. We're a nonprofit, private organization. We're not a government entity. Do you receive funds from the government? Well, it's been, it has been tested. We do receive some funds um, for town meeting TV. So we can set up policies. Um, so we, we have an aspirational idea around keeping the doors open to all and for mm -hmm. free speech. We also want to balance that with being an organization that recognizes power of balance. So help talk me through that. Outs if it's outside the legal realm, Help talk me through that. How would you? I'm not able to do that because I honestly don't know what you're talking about. If this organization receives, I'll give you a perfect example yeah. of what you guys helped me on one time. Do you remember when there was an attempt to shut down Al Jazeera English in this mm -hmm. community? Yeah. And that's what was argued by those who wanted to shut that down. Yep. It was hate. It was a terrorist organization. It had to be shut down. You know how we won? Run on, it was run on Burlington Telecom. It was run on Burlington Telecom. It had government funds. Mm -hmm. Because it had government funds, and it was owned by our government, the city, yeah. we were able to argue that under our Constitution, they could, something like the group that tried to censor Al Jazeera English could not do that constitutionally. Yep. That's how we won that example. Do you, don't you think that Al Jazeera English was called hate speech, terrorist speech? Remember that? And I was but it's not. I, I was interviewed by this uh, organization on that subject. Yeah. No, I mean, and we won it. Yeah. It's clearly not hate speech. The Al Jazeera, it's just news. So and I, I, the, I would argue. So when, I think when this you, is the point no, where we. Yeah, let me say, I, I run a very small hosting business. I uh, have a terms of service. I feel that it, as a platform, and I do not receive government money, it is my mm. responsibility and my free speech right yes. to eliminate any hate speech from my, right. from my platform, and I yeah, do so. Right. I would say that the, like uh, uh, Facebook has, has facilitated a genocide yeah. in Myanmar, mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. and other places. They've been very irresponsible. And I would say as a platform, they have a responsibility to eliminate if hate If it's speech. a private organization, they can. And they have a responsibility to do so. As I said, if they're a private organization, they can do what they wish. And you know what, Megan? Once uh, our uh, Burlington Telecom lost Al Jazeera and was sold to a private company, guess what happened? Censorship. And they're allowed to do it because it's a private organization. They immediately got all Canadian uh, programs off. So what that... so. There's the issue of censorship. There's the issue of um, meeting the needs of, you know, helping to protect marginalized communities, which I think is where you're going uh -huh. with what's hate speech and what's not hate speech, and how do you define that? And I think there's a, I think this is where we get into that question, Marina, of for you, I guess, is in whose hands do we leave the definition of, of and help having to define speech. So you brought well, up the I, I don't. I don't. I don't use the government. I don't want. That's not where I am. I'm. Okay. Uh, governments can go. Come and go, and uh, I'm not in the business of supporting them one way or the other. I want to defend my community. And when you organize to take away my rights, when you organize to say, you know someone under 22 should not get uh, gender affirming care, then I have a problem. That is not just uh, hate speech. That is stepping on the pyramid of genocide and trying to remove our health care rights. And uh, that's what I do. I mean, yeah, there's governments that I can talk about how Poland doesn't allow uh, speech that would create religious strife or, or uh, how France will penalize people but in the end I'm not a lawyer I am not a government I am an activist who who, who stands up for um, marginalized community so if you're coming up again if you're talking about coming up against migrants and I can be there I will fight you and so that may be physical if I have to if you're gonna say you're gonna shut down a clinic a b abortion clinic I'm going to come there, and I'm going to put my body in between there. And I have, uh, when the Lambs of Christ came to Philly in, I believe it was 89, with their seven city siege, that became a militant fight. We weren't talking about what the government, what the Constitution did. We were fighting for people's rights in that clinic. Congratulations. So, so Thank you. So, so again, bring it back to something like CCTV, which mm -hmm. you know does receive some government funds, but but still is in that gray area. Is able we are able to shut our doors if we want or not? Mm -hmm. Who defines? Are you really, uh, is that true? Do you know? Well, it's been. I think it's been tested in the New York Circuit Court of Appeals. You think? I. You're, you know? I'm not a. Lo I'm I not know. A lawyer I know. I don't yeah. know either. I'm yeah, it was I'm tested asking. around Manhattan Neighborhood Network because um, they shut out some producers at one point, and the, they, they shut out some producers <laughs> who were critical of the station, and then those folks took them to court, and the court said, you know, the station had the right to shut them out. Um, the. Um, I guess my question, one of the things that we struggle here with here, both practically and kind of legally, is how you define that and what we would do in that situation. So when we see somebody making programming that folks identify as dangerous, hurtful, harmful, et cetera, what we've always said is let's find other programming to mm -hmm. counter that, right. or let's invite folks, or let's add disclaimers so that folks know that this programming is made and may or may not um, you know, conform to social norms or social expectations, et cetera. But how do you, how do you define it when you see it, and where does that responsibility lie? Well, we can talk about what happened in Middlebury. I mean, I, I do not believe that I believe what Charles Murray stands for and does. You it, might have to start from the beginning. Charles Murray is a white supremacist who uh, is a kind of a darling of the of the conservative right. He uh, talks about race differences. His fav famous book is called The Bell Curve, which argues that uh, black people are not as intelligent as white people mm. and should not be 
given affirmative action or any help at all because they need to be filtered to the bottom of society and that's the way it should be. He came to Middlebury. There was a horrible protest against him. The, the thing that the compromise position that was not taken in the, ho the, the college, from my understanding, is a lot of the people who organized against Murray would have been all right if he actually had a knowledgeable person to debate and to counter his ideas, but he was allowed to present what I would argue <laughs> are genocidal ideas unopposed. And, you know, the, there, I do not believe in, in platforming fascists of any sort, but the compromise here would be to say, okay, you want to come on the show, fine, but you're going to have to be That's what opposed. Said. That's what you said, though. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think that's sort of one of our policies. I mean, you know, and it, to, to call it a policy, it's pretty loose. Um, but again, I think I'm trying to get at how do you define, and in that case, I think I remember this, and I, I would support, I mean, personally, whether that means anything, I think it's supported legally also, the right of folks to protest a speaker at any time and um, to, you know, to put their mind, to put their bodies between the mic if they want to shut that speech down. I think what we're talking about specifically here is where, who has the right to shut down speech, when and where. And so, public organizations do not. If they're funded by the government, then, as I said about Al Jazeera, and man, that was considered a hate network mm -hmm. by many people. Mm -hmm. In fact, there were huge hearings, as you recall all over Burlington, yep. led by me. I organized those hearings mm -hmm. to keep Al Jazeera English on the air. We won that fight based on free speech principles. Mm -hmm. It had been defined by many people throughout this country as hate speech. Whether you agreed with that or not, that was what many people said, and that it threatened particularly Jewish people. Al Jazeera English threatened Jewish people. Yep. Nevertheless, because Al Jazeera English was part of Burlington Telecom, a government institution, we were allowed and we won that fight to keep it on the air because of free speech. And I would do it again any time is questioned. Now, he, this person, Marina not has- called me he. I'm sorry. He, uh, she, I'm sorry. Marina, let's call yes. you by your name, Marina, argues that um, he has the, she has the right to shut everything down because she is a private organization. That's fine. Right? Yeah, I'm just pausing for a minute. Um, I think we're still not getting to the place of I think we're still not getting to the place of sometimes there are things that are said that you just want to go away. Well, yes. I, I, would say, I would say that, that you know, want. I would say hate speech is the beginning of, yeah. of genocide. Everyone who, spit, who, who, uh, who studies it says it starts with slurs, then it starts with people trying to go in the government to discriminate against people, then it goes to violence, then it goes to killing, and then the final stage is denial. So where and do you interrupt of, when, it? When yeah, you I start, guess that's the question. Where, hearing, where do you interrupt it? When you start hearing slurs like, you know, the K word for Jewish people, people or uh, tranny for people like me, this is not something that's just speech. This is the beginning of what will be a, a, a trans bashing for me or, or if I get, uh, you know, attacked for being Jewish. You know, these are, not, these are not harmless. This is the beginning of what will, is the pyramid to genocide. I don't, I'm not a lawyer. I am not mm -hmm. a government. Mm -hmm. I don't know where to draw the line. But but yes, what I, do, as as as, yes, anti, as an anti-fascist, I stand up against that. When somebody starts saying you should uh, you should eliminate transgenderism, as Michael Knowles did in at CPAC, he want he doesn't want to int uh, eliminate transgenderism as a as, as a as a abstract concept. He wants to eliminate me from pu public life. He wants to eliminate my health care. And my bones are, depend on some hormones or they will get weak. 
And that's what, what, what Michael Pence has done, Vivek Ramaswamy, wants to eliminate all trans care. And they are using, they're, they've gone beyond just speech and opinion. They are organizing to harm my community. And this is where I fight. I think that, I think this is where, I think for us, this is where we're struggling as an organization that really cares about people and cares about the community that we're in. And believes, yeah. I, and I understand and believe that when you cut down speech for one person, you open the door to um, cutting down speech. And, and often you're hurting marginalized communities when you limit free speech more than you're gonna hurt non-marginalized well, communities. Well, it's like, it's like well, but, look what happened in... in, uh, in but in I, is there a chance to respond to something? Go ahead. Yeah, Beth. go ahead. What Marina said was her opinion. Her opinion is that this speech causes violence. If you prove that there was violence, that's a crime. The speech is not a crime. Balderdash. Look, Good. The, okay, the, the, that's, uh, the is protocols of the is elders of Zion of have, the, have, have yeah, made, right. killed thousands of okay. people. Right. The, the Turner Diaries have Please. Pr okay. provoked what happened okay. in Oklahoma City with a bombing and have provoked multiple other things. I don't, I don't, I get a mouthful, proven. Well, the, the people, the pe person who blew up Oklahoma City Federal Building was inspired by the Turner Diaries and said so. Okay. So, that, then so there's you don't, that nexus. you don't have a, you don't see a line between no, speech. No, not unless you prove it. If and you, and this is, well, I mean, it's been, it's, I mean, no, we're not going to prove it. No, it has not been proven. Gonna, it's, no, it has not. When it's proven, wait, Sandy, then it's proven. Sandy, what I'm saying is we're not going to prove it here. I think this I know has that. been a conversation I that. that goes I, back. I, I understand that. I mean, if, if there's a concept called stochastic terrorism. I start saying things against this group. Trans people are, are attacking people in, in, in bathrooms. They're dangerous. Or as the Council of Conservative Citizens, uh, formerly the Council of White Citizens, you look at their web page. All it is is black people that committed some crime. And they, the CCC, in spite... I'm sorry, I don't know what the CCC it's is. It's the Council of Conservative Citizens. Uh -huh. If you don't know about them, I'm explaining it. Thank you. They, they, it's the outgrowth of the Council of White Citizens from the 60s, which I'm sure you're unfortunately familiar. It was, it was organized by Gordon Baum, both organizations. This propaganda that has been put out by the CCC inspired Dylan Roof. And the same stuff comes out from, if you look at the LGB Alliance, you look at the, some of the other anti-trans groups, it's the same stuff. So you, just, you just take I, black I think, people in your place so with okay, trans can we people. Move on? So, well, no. I've I, already said my opinion about so this. I get it. There's an idea about we have to prove prove the you relationship. Have to prove violence. This, is like, this is a conversation yeah. that's gone on, right? So, yeah. who was it? Um, uh, Gore, who put the stickers on the, the warning labels on um, music. Tipper Gore, Tipper the Gore, music, uh, because it was going to cause, because yeah. it was going to cause violence. So this, mm -hmm. this, we're not going to solve whether this, but the, and I, and I hear you about there's a difference between physical violence and or threats, threats, but, but I don't think we can deny, and there is an idea that that language can deny someone's humanity, and that that is a kind of violence. And my question to you all, You said two things. Yeah. One language can deny mm -hmm. people's humanity. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. It's language. When, in fact, it does hurt that human being, it's a crime. Got it. So well, let's... regardless mm -hmm. of whether it's a crime or it's hurtful, we as community members want to take Want to want to take some sort of step towards solving yeah. that, mm -hmm. right? So, it's long been supposed that violence. Supposed. It's long. It's long been supposed, supposed that violence right? starts with speech. Right. That you dehumanize someone, and you make a good soldier, right? Who can you you no, dehumanize someone? I'm not agreeing someone. with any of this, so don't say you right. You don't have to. You yeah. don't have to agree. I think it's. I hey, think your organizing uh, organization is constantly. The LGBT Alliance is constantly dehumanizing trans people.
I don't have any organization. You 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 said you would be uh, willing to be Felker's uh, uh, consultant on the, the very show. I watched it. I'm his attorney. Okay. So. So. I guess this is the this is and we're probably not going to solve it today. Is that you know this is where we get to the question of what do we do as community members who live and work and and are here together. What do we do as community members, whether it's on a legal side, whether it's on an organizing side, to try to put a, to try to put a stopper in the place where speech becomes harmful to other folks? I say more speech. That's what I really say. Well, what I, I, I'm not going to really alter that opinion what very I, what much. I, what I'll say. And I say conversation. You know what the word conversation to me means? With verse. Mm -hmm. People should always be countering speech with more speech and with conversation. And I, I doubt if I'm going to change that opinion very easily. What, one thing I would like to say before the end of this conversation, speech, hate speech is a lot like radioactivity. I release 10 curies of iodine-131 over Burlington. It's a hor horrible thing. Some sort of nuclear accident happened. Cancer goes up 10%. Mm -hmm. But I can't prove any particular person got cancer from this particular um, incident. This is one of the things that um, mindless uh, pro-nuclear people, I am pro-nuclear, but people who are mindless in it uh, like to say, uh, you can't prove that this person got cancer from being near Three Mile Island. But there's an increase of, of cancer near Three Mile Island. When you have hate speech, it's very much like spewing radioactivity. You cannot necessarily draw a straight line or prove it pedantically like you might in court. But as humans, we have to realize releasing poison into the environment, whether it be a strontium-131 from a nuclear bomb tested in, uh, in the, the desert, or constantly talking dehumanizing speech. Yes, the both of these are toxic and both of these have the potential to kill. Can you prove a straight line um, association between them? No, you can't. So but as, would, as a society, we have to make uh, draw a line. So you would have an organization like CCTV limit or, um, or shut down that speech. Yes. And then, uh, so that's where I come Or at to the place. very least, have it directly uh, opposed. If, directly if, opposed. Yeah. If you can't do it. If you, so if you want. That's what I'm saying. Yes. That's so exactly what I'm saying. So more conversation. More conversation. Yes. So the conversation, um, so what is the next conversation? What do you see as the next conversation? From I here? don't see another conversation okay. ab about, about uh, free speech on this. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not generally a debater. What I do is I, I do public records requests. I write articles rarely. This isn't where I, this isn't my um, thing, but I find people who are causing harm, like certain fascists that used to live in Enosburg, and I expose them. We're talking about a neo-Nazi. I try to expose them. That's what I do. That's yeah. my activism. Yeah, that's your free speech. Yeah. That's good that you exercise your free speech to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sandy, how about you? What do you see? Is there more conversation to be had? I always have conversations. You know that more than anybody. Mm -hmm. But what about here? I mean, I feel like... I, just what I said. I would have yeah. conversations here in public like I'm doing. Yeah. Do you feel like this is useful to the public? Do you what? feel like do you feel like this conversation we've had here is useful I to don't folks know. or is we'll it have useful? to ask the public. Yeah. I, I really although I would argue Marina's right to word to sl to throw around words like fascist. I don't like that. Um, I find that hate speech. Hmm. I would nonsense. Not, nonsense. I would not limit it. And I think we should just have more and more conversations. When somebody calls themselves a fascist, they are a fascist. I mean, the person I'm speaking about in, in, in Enosburg is a member of Patriot Front, and they are quite proudly a fascist. So I can call them a fascist. I'm not slurring anyone. I, I'm not arguing anything about it. Mm -hmm. you have, because you are exercising your free speech 
to utter hateful words about oh, other people. Oh, the poor Nazis! Right to do I'm it. sorry, Sandy. This comes from an organization that sprung from Nat Thank Vanguard Thank you. America, yeah. which killed Heather Heyer in Charlottesville. Hi. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah. Poor, so poor Vanguard America. Poor Patriot Front. So, we you're may, the victim. We may be ending on a on a hot note. No, we're not. Not to me, you're not. <laughs> we're, we're ending, ending on, a, on an insulting a note to me, but as you know, I can do that easily. Well, insults go in all different directions, but I, I want to say that I appreciate both of you. Thank you. For, for coming today and participating, and I'm, I'm sorry that we didn't get, you know, we can't solve this We never will. We will not, here. except if we really have clear, yeah. I think, loyalty to the U.S. Constitution. Yeah, that's what I have, and I always will. Yeah, you're a constitutional. The Constitution has been interpreted in many ways. Before Brandenburg, it was free speech was restricted entirely, mm -hmm. and uh, and there may be decisions in the past that will in, that will interpret it differently that don't include hate speech. Yeah. Well, we're going to strive to have a couple more conversations specifically around free speech. I think there are other conversations that have still that are still yet. To be there's going to be part Earth, next. But there's a lot of going to be free speech controversies coming up about this war yeah. in Israel. Yeah, and we'll probably be standing on the same side on that one, Sandy. All right. Thank you both for coming. Thank don't you. don't get up without taking off your mics. Yeah. And, um, really appreciate it. Thank you, Marina. Thank you.